G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder. Before we get into today's video, I'd just like to remind you that I have a Discord server, so if you guys would like to join that one, uh, especially if you have notifications turned on and you haven't been getting them, uh, I find that a lot of people tend to get missed by the YouTube algorithm, there tends to be bugs, etc. A way to sort of uh, circumvent that, if you will, is to join the Discord server and have the notifications on for content. You'll also be notified when I go live with live streams on Twitch or Alternatively, maybe there's some Twitch drops that you don't know about, uh, and they will be sort of posted there. Maybe it's Esports Ready going live for some Twitch drops, maybe it's uh, War Thunder Japan, maybe it's whatever, and you'll just be notified there. Anyway, on with today's video, and we are having a look at a plane that you love and you hate. It's one of those planes that sometimes makes you just want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, and throw out the bathtub itself, that bathtub being the Scimitar F Mark I. Put simply, this plane is a Hunter with four AIM-9Bs and a bit more acceleration maybe, maybe a bit less top speed, maybe a bit less energy retention, uh, but it is an absolute fatso, and you know what? In the right hands, this plane is fucking fantastic, but in the wrong hands, this makes me want to absolutely neck myself. I'm not kidding. No, I am kidding, but this particular plane can be really frustrating to fly, and one of the things you need to be really sure of is your aim. This plane has its guns on the underside of the fuselage, sort of like where the Harrier has theirs, but a little bit further forward relative to the cockpit. So you're basically going to be needing to, to lead your shots a little bit more. Now, leading your shots is all good and well, but when you're flying a bathtub, it does become a little bit more difficult. Not only that, but your dogfighting capabilities are severely limited in this plane, and uh, it's not really easy to get your guns on target in general. Well, at least you have a bit of speed, a bit of acceleration, and a bit of energy retention, because that's exactly what you need to make use of in this plane. It is essentially just a very fast, very highly energy, reten energy retaining beast, and you have to use it as such. It's got a bit of a narrow playstyle, but once you work it out, it can be decent. It's still stressful, and I hate it, but it's good. So, let's get into the gameplay, shall we? What I'm going to do here is climb a little bit, and whilst this plane isn't particularly good at anything in, in particular, other than, I guess, acceleration and speed, it's pretty decent overall at a couple of things. So... It's not your, your all-rounder, it's not your jack-of-all-trades, but it certainly is decent at certain things. Now, I'm going to be ignoring this MiG-17, even though the F-84F is uh, pretty much screwed here, and that's because there's a G-91 and LA-200 and some friends heading all after him, and he's just going to get Piper parried, so unfortunately there's not a lot I can do for him, even if I did try and step in, so I might as well continue with my speed. So... I uh, also have to mention that there is another scimitar in this match that uh, is going to be proving extremely valuable, and that was that uh, gentleman there in the green, looking looking very handsome in the green, I must say. So first of all, I'm going to go head on with this G91, and it's not really going to provide anything. I'm going to go vertical, and you can sort of see here the limitations of the scimitar. I'm kind of playing it this, as aggressively as I feasibly can, and to me, that's my preferred playstyle. So if I can try and push this thing to its most aggressive, uh, that's how I work best personally. But if those of you that like to sort of stay in the outskirts of the battle uh, enjoy this thing, then honestly, having a more passive playstyle is probably for the better. I narrowly avoid a Seahawk 100 there and an LA-15, which I didn't see coming. And I got actually kind of lucky there, I have to admit. But here's our first sort of target. The G91 here is nice and slow, and I'm finding my very first issues here with the rudder. I let it rip and get myself some lovely shots on the uh, G91. Next shot here is coming for the IL-28, who's not paying attention, and unfortunately that means that he's going to have to pay a repair cost instead. Going into the vertical, or not vertical, but a slight climb, I'm going to convert some of that speed into altitude, and then roll over to engage enemies that are traveling in a straight line. Unfortunately, the A4E is attracting too many flies, and it's giving me a little bit of a hard time trying to pick a target. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put it 
into uh, level flight, cut into this G91's turn, so hopefully he ignores me. And then once I realize that I've got no one on my 6, I'm going to roll over again and try again. I don't want to be too passive here, I don't want to sort of go for a bit of speed and then do gentle turns like you used to do in the Hunter way back in the day, but what I am trying to do is just trying to go for some, uh, sort of try and play as passively as I can, but try and play aggressively as well. Uh, there's, a, there's a fine balance with this type of plane, and unfortunately I am struggling to find it here in this case. I have to admit, I'm not the best scimitar pilot, but I do give this a red hot go. And as you can see, our Red Hot Go hasn't quite amounted to anything that I have uh, really, really liked. Now, I've noticed that my team has basically done a heck and disappear, and this means that we are going to have to carry. So, what we're going to do is do our scimitar thing. The thing has a fairly, fairly good climb rate, and it's also got a fairly good top speed. So, I'm going to be putting that to use, doing really gentle sweeping turns in order to prevent myself from bleeding too much speed, and therefore getting caught by the Seahawk LA-15 and MiG-15 behind me. I'm going to try and help out my, uh, my mate here, and we're going to start getting some good communication in. And this is where the scimitar is starting to shine. We can already see that we're in a fairly precarious situation. Most of the enemy team's dead, but the ones that aren't are posing a fairly large threat to myself and this other scimitar. The LA-200 is fairly concentrated there on my uh, teammate there. Let it rip again and have myself a nice little kill, immediately rolling over in order to try and get the LA-15 Seahawk and the MiG-15 to turn around and bleed a little bit of speed because I know I'm faster than the LA-15, I know I'm faster than the Seahawk and I know I can be faster than the MiG-15 if I play my cards right. Here we go with the LA-15 and the Seahawk. I'm just pulling a couple of very gentle maneuvers, I'm not trying to throw them off their aim completely and then putting myself up into a vertical hoping they'll follow and hoping that the Scimitar can pick off some easy kills. As soon as the Seahawk and the MiG switch to the other Scimitar I decide I want to nose around and try my best to get them while they're distracted. This is what the scimitar is good at. It's not good at picking dogfights, it's not good at being in 1v1s, it's good at those 2v2s and those teamwork situations. And whilst you don't always have them, you can really pull them off and my god when you do, you end up with stuff like that. The MiG-15 unfortunately, maybe his crew blacked out. Maybe he didn't have enough energy, maybe he was running low on fuel. But uh, one of the things that you really, really need to, to remember is that this thing is not a solo machine. You have to be working with your team or at least picking up stuff that is baited for your team. And that that is where the Simi really shines. And for me, that's what makes the Scimitar workable. Now, I personally don't like this plane because of its playstyle and it doesn't suit me personally. Like I said, for those of you that play in a squad and enjoy working with your teammates, for me, or, or, or in this in this situation here, I would say that it is one of the better planes to do this in. Uh, perhaps if you paired this with a Swift, it would be an absolute wonder combo. You could really pull some stuff with the Swift and with the Scimitar in uh, two different, uh, like in a two-man squad, and of course. Uh, I believe this is a supermarine plane, and I believe the Scimitar is, sorry, I believe the Swift is also a supermarine plane. So, of course, being derived from the, or being from the same company that invented the Spitfire, you know that these planes are very capable indeed, but they do require a little bit of brain power. Now, for me, I don't really like using my brain power because, unfortunately, I don't have much of it. I only have about three or four brain cells. Uh, I can't really count them every day. Sometimes they come, sometimes they go, but... When they do work, it's it's a bit of a miracle. So, speaking of miracle, the Seahawk is now distracted. And this is where you have to strike. And look at that, he's turned himself around and the rudder has uh, stuck with me again. It's one of those things that you really have to be mindful of. Going over 600 kilometers per hour, you're going to be facing these types of issues. And the Seahawk here is still quite slow, but it gives me a chance to roll over and give it another go. And we are pretty much a kilometer in, I'm going to send a missile on the way, and it is going to strike. Maybe? No. I'm going to have to finish it off with guns, but that's okay, because I have plenty of ammunition to spare. 
Of course, speaking of spare, I have a spare brain cell left and what we're going to be doing with that spare is looking for the last two enemies on the team. And uh, one of them is over by the airfield. I don't really want to strafe him. I do want to get rid of him, but it's in a little bit of a precarious situation. Like I said, the airfield AA in uh, many videos I've stated this, I would like to see it reworked. I would like to see there be a timer for vehicles to be able to go down and repair, rearm. But of course, as soon as they start to abuse that, which would be at maybe the three or four minute mark, the airfield AA switches off. And then of course, there are certain details that I have outlined in a video. So if you would like to have a look for that video, then uh, be my guest. Definitely give that one a watch. Definitely worth it in my opinion. But uh, what we're going to sort of try and do is get this LA-15, lure him out of his airfield AA, and it looks like he's going to go for a head-on. He doesn't take it very wisely, and then he goes quickly head-on with me, and I, this thing doesn't really pull out a head-on, so you don't really want to go last minute. Unfortunately, my buddy who uh, has been working with me so well up until this point manages to rip his wings or crash or something like that, and it basically leaves me and him uh, sorry, me and the, the LA-15. And you can see here the problems with the, the scimitar or the sort of issues that I personally face with it is it's a bit wonky, it's a bit wobbly. Um, and of course the airfield AA is lighting me up so I need to get out of there. I don't really want to be anywhere near it. So I'm just going to sort of bide my time. I don't really want to get shot down. So maybe while it's not concentrating on me, I could sort of get the LA-15. He plays it quite cleverly. This is this is how I would probably recommend that you play if you are got multiple enemies camping around your airfield AA. Uh, but at the same time, it's not really great for everyone. It sort of sucks. It's, it's a bit of a shitty situation. But you know what? You make the most of it. And the uh, LA-15 has done a pretty good job at that so far. I don't really see any winner coming out of this sort of situation. Other than uh, the airfield AA, of course. But it's only a matter of time before someone gets shot down, and it's, I, I hope to God it's not going to be me. So I'm taking my distance, and this is, like I said, the typical playstyle of a scimitar. You make your pass, you go out for some speed, and then you turn around, go in, nas, na, uh, uh, another fast pass, and then you uh, go and, and leave again. Now, the LA-15 decides to, to have a chat and suggests that he wants to just uh, end this or he doesn't want to get strafed. So what I decide to do is, for once in my bloody life, show a little bit of mercy. You'll see in the chat in a sec, I basically tell this guy, go land, go bail, um, save yourself the death, save yourself the repair cost, and I won't bother you. If you've been nice, you know, you fought well, I've been pretty happy with this match. I think he would be not pretty happy as such, but at least willing to, to take the L and sort of just know that he fought his best. And commendations to this LA-15. He does go in for the landing, but uh, unfortunately he stacks it into the ground. And that leaves us with uh, a victory with five kills. Well, on that hand, uh, or on that note, good work to the LA-15. Uh, it's a shame he, you crashed and had to pay the repair cost, but it was great fighting. And that shows you sort of exactly the way I feel about the Scimitar. It's it's a good plane. I just, I just hate it. I, I hate it because I can't play it the way I like. And that's just the way it goes. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Take care. I'll catch you next time.